Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and welcome to the start of a fall reading vlog. So I'm planning on reading three books that are supposed to have a lot of fall vibes. I'm in that mood. Also excuse the chewing cat. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, these three books I've learned have a lot of fall vibes. So I'm going to read them for you. I know November is like winding down right now, but you know what? Like I want to read these before I get into the Christmas season mood. The three books that we're going to be reading for this video. First, I have Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean, which is a new release. It just released in November and it is a hockey friends to lovers romance. Then I'm going to be reading Accidentally Amy and the... Oh my gosh, the author's name is escaping me right now. I am so sorry. Um, but Escaping Amy, the title and the author is on the screen right now. Um, this is a kind of like meet cute moment forbidden because they end up working at the same job, romance. And then the last book that I have is Chloe Lisa's newest release, Better Hate Than Never, which is a childhood enemies to lovers romance and a retelling of the taming of the shrew those are the three books that i'm going to be reading for this video um and i hope y'all enjoy i'm about 75 percent of the way through my first book so i'm reading dukes and deeks by tori jean i actually got an arc for this book this book actually came out like two days ago um but it's okay <laughs> it's okay i love tori so much and she's very understanding about stuff like that. The cover just screams fall and I am obsessed with it. So I had to read it for this fall reading vlog. I love Tori Jean so much. She is really good with her words. She's only written, I think this is her third book, I want to say. Um, she wrote, sitting right here, um, she wrote Finding Gene Kelly, um, which has fantastic endometriosis rep. When, I think every single one of her books has endometriosis rep because Tori Jean herself has endo um and so I really love the representation in these books they're great this one's really fun it's about Ollie I think that's how you pronounce her name or Auli Auli it's A-U-L-I-E so I'm just gonna say Ollie please correct me if I'm wrong um she it's a French name so I don't I don't know um <laughs> but that's her name and this is her romance with her best friend Jack. Jack is actually a famous hockey player and he's covered in tattoos has like perfectly coiffed hair um but Ollie like has this unrequited crush on him and thinks it'll never happen because they kind of want different things out of life and she does not want to ruin their friendship. Jack thinks the same exact thing about her though. And that happens to be his best friends, like his guy best friends, little sister. And so he's like, oh no, like he would murder me, not gonna happen. At the beginning of this book, Jack gets in a little bit of a tiff with one of his hockey rivals and he is suspended from playing hockey for a little bit. And so he's actually home in town for the fall for a little bit, for a few months. And Ollie's in a little bit of a bind because her job right now is working on this festival that's happening that happens every single fall. It's the Jane Austen Festival. I wish this festival was real. I need to look into if it's real, but I think it just came from Tori's brain and I think someone needs to just manifest it and make it real because it sounds so freaking fantastic. So basically, I think this takes place like over a month or multiple months, I don't know, but basically it's a fall festival and it's Jane Austen themed. You have booths and vendors and all that stuff, but most importantly, you have actors and characters portraying certain books. So once a week or weekend or every couple of days, I don't remember the time. I am not good with time. They will play out a book by Jane Austen throughout the venue. And so it's, it's so fun. It sounds so fun. So they're obviously doing Pride and Prejudice. Like this is focused on Pride and Prejudice this week. Ollie's in a little bit of a bind because her two actors who played um, Lydia and Wickham have literally like fallen in love and eloped. <laughs> and so there's nobody to play Lydia and Wickham. So you can kind of see where we're going here. Um, Jack is roped into playing Wickham. He's gonna do a solid for Ollie and Ollie's going to play Lydia. Ollie's kind of held herself back from being in the limelight with people in general because of some things that's happened to her in her past. Um, and she's also dealing with like, oh my gosh, if you are triggered by 
doctors. <laughs> I really felt for her in this book because I have a very strong love-hate relationship with doctors. I have a chronic illness. If anybody who has a chronic illness definitely also feels my pain, shares always pain, of having a frustration with doctors and being diagnosed with something. We already know as the reader because Toriji basically tells you like this is going to be a journey about Ollie figuring out that she has endometriosis. And so she's having a lot of pain and a lot of endometriosis, endometriosis, that's such a long word, endo, <laughs> endo symptoms. And a few of the doctors that she's gone through to in this book have basically just told her like, oh, it's just this, it's just this, don't worry, it's totally normal. And like vomiting in public, not normal. Fainting, not normal. <laughs> I know from personal experience, not normal. Experiencing like, horrible pain in your abdomen, not normal. I felt for her with doctors like just telling her over and over and over again, like you're fine. It's pretty normal, like you're a woman, you know what I mean? So she's going through a lot of painful stuff right now. Literally just to finish a chapter where she like passed out in front of Jack and he was like, what is going on? Because she has not been upfront about her pain like whatsoever um, and so, Jack's getting a little bit upset about that. <laughs> um, Jack also has some past trauma with like doctors and the medical world because his dad died from cancer when he was I think about 12 or somewhere around that age and his dad never told him and he's mad at his dad, he's mad at the world, he's mad at cancer, you know what I mean? So he has a, a lot of past issues with that as well. So both characters have gone through quite a lot, are going through quite a lot. But I absolutely love the fall vibes in here, especially with the festival going on. I love the festival scenes. I love the scenes where the two of them are pretending to be like, are playing Lydia and Wicca. There's like a scene when Ollie sees Jack in like the historical period outfit that he has to wear to play Wickham, And she's like, can't take her eyes off of his butt. And I'm like, girl, that would be me too. I don't blame you. <laughs> Um, so I'm really enjoying this. It's really fun. I'm gonna try and finish it tonight, but we'll see I have a few videos to film. But this book is very promising. It was one of my most anticipated, oh, most anticipated reads of the second half of the year for a reason. I love Tori Jean so much. She's also incredibly sweet. And right now she's actually on bed rest because she's pregnant and her doctors have recommended her being on bed rest. And actually I also just ordered, you could pre-order a physical copy of this book um before i think november 30th and you can get it uh signed and personalized uh by tori jean only if you order it through like a uh, blue below bookshop which is actually a bookstore that is in front of the high school that i went to in houston yeah i love blue willow bookshop like if you're ever in houston you gotta go there it's so cute but it's actually i used to go there all the time because it's right next to my high school where i went to high school so i pre-ordered my book from there literally today and with that pre-order you get signed personalized you get an art print of ollie and jack and you also get a sticker that looks really cute so i'm very excited for those things and um i am going to go pick that up at the store like at the beginning of december so um, anyway, I've been chatting your ear off about this book. I'm really liking it and I can't wait to read more fall books. Hi everybody, I have finished Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean. I just went to the grocery store, so excuse all of my groceries scattered about behind me. Um, and I also filmed yesterday, so my shelves are looking a little bit disheveled. <laughs> it's fine, we're fine. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really enjoy this one. I even like filmed like a whole, not filmed, I wasn't in it, but I put together a whole reel on my Instagram if you want to check it out that like I put the vibes of the book in reel and I really like it. Like I have nothing like bad to say except like I just personally didn't vibe well with the conflict of the story. I, many people know, I do not like other woman drama and there was other woman drama in here and that's just not something that I love. So this book is going to be getting a four star rating from me which is still a fantastic rating. I love this book. I absolutely feel for the heroine and her having to struggle with doctors and getting a diagnosis and oh my gosh it like the doctor at the end of this book like left me teary-eyed because of how relieved I felt <laughs> like like this heroine isn't even real but I felt so relieved for her because I have felt that in my life where you just have doctor after doctor after doctor gaslighting you or telling you like you're fine or they legitimately don't know what's wrong with you that's a rarity that doctors let us say like I don't know here go to somebody else I've had a few of those so those doctors are nice but like it's hard to find somebody who's knowledgeable in chronic illnesses and it sucks because there's a lot of us out there in the world so um I really felt for 
our heroine in the story. Um, the hero was really sweet. Um, there were times I wanted to like wring his neck and just like say like just tell her how you feel because he was feeling kind of insecure about it oh my alarm is going off i need to go get my clothes out of the laundry um <laughs> but i really thoroughly enjoyed this one the fall vibes were immaculate they literally go apple picking the fair like the jane austen fair fantastic i, I want to go there so badly um so i thoroughly enjoyed this one and i can't wait to read like other books in the series i think she's coming out with more books in the series and i have like inklings of who could be possibly couples. I know there's going to be one probably that's like enemies, like hate to love. These two characters hate each other to lovers. There's a character named Grady in here who I absolutely love. He's like this, oh my gosh, my dad with the leaf blower. No, it's the chainsaw. <gasps> no. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, his chainsaw's out. Anyway, um, <laughs> so Grady in here, I love him and how he got like totally smitten over this one character, like I was like, yes, I need that romance. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go now because my dad's chainsaw is out. He's also not like a chainsaw maniac, y'all, because he's been, you can hear maybe the chainsaw in the background of a few of my videos. He is a wood carver, <laughs> so that's what he's doing. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pick up my next book. I have finished my next book for this vlog. This honestly isn't really a vlog. I guess it's just a review of fall books that I've been reading because I haven't really put any life content in here and i apologize um but say hello to hickory and poppy there's like probably crumbs in that bowl so don't be surprised during this update they completely knock the bowl off the table because they want food i can totally see that happening anyway um i have finished the next book for this video this one is called accidentally amy and i saw this on a um goodreads um goodreads list i want to say where i literally just googled fall romances and a goodreads list popped up and this was one of the books on there and the hold for libby took me weeks like weeks long and i was like how have i never heard about this book like why is the wait so long on my libby what is going on here comes poppy he's gonna join us on the windowsill right buddy <laughs> anyway um so i've never heard about this book before i didn't know anything about it i think i'm familiar with the artist who did the um cover the cover i think is really cute he's trying to eat an eraser let's not do that oh excuse me thank you sir okay he's still trying to eat the eraser okay let me hold it so he doesn't get it okay anyway that's the life with cats y'all you never know what you're gonna get with them literally i woke up this morning with like all my pill bottles on the floor because they just thought they would love to play maracas with their paws with all the pills don't worry like they're all child safety locked like they can't get into them anyway y'all i'm trying to talk about this book will you let me goodness so accidentally amy this book starts out with our heroine whose name is not amy i don't remember her real name <laughs> i don't um anyway she is at a starbucks and it's the day of her first day it's the first day of her new job hey they are trying to tear apart the couch anyway um <laughs> this woman who is not amy is late for her first day at work or is going to be if starbucks keeps making all these drinks very slowly and there's someone like one of the baristas is calling out this woman's name named amy who ordered the same exact drink that she did it's like a pumpkin spice latte maybe i don't know um it was a very fall -esque drink so i was reading this book trying to figure out what's fall about it because this is a fall vlog and so that was one element at least anyway she's like this is literally the exact drink that i ordered amy has not showed up and like the three times her name has been called i'm gonna take the drink i have to go and she's like i never do this but like i'm terrified i'm gonna be late it's the same as our drink that we ordered i paid the same amount like it's fine she turns around from getting the cup and she immediately bumps into this guy's chest coffee spills all over her and him they immediately like have this meet cute moment where they connect they banter right off the bat um but then she's like okay see you later i gotta go to work and turns out he is her boss's boss at work. Oh, I forgot to also mention when she was walking away out of the store, he's like, oh, see you later, Amy. Like, like he thought her name was Amy because she got the Amy drink. And she's like, oh crap, my name is not Amy. This man thinks my name is Amy. And so when she gets introduced to him at work, he's like, kind of pissed. He's like, uh, you stole another woman's drink. Like your name's not actually Amy, you lied. He ended an engagement with a woman because she would like lie all the time. So it's like not up for liars, which I feel you do. The heroine who's not Amy <laughs> is like very persistent of being like, there's a connection here and I feel something. Can you stop being a douche canoe for like a second? And like see that like, I've never done that before. It was like, 
a spur of the moment like horrible decision but like that is not me as a person can you like give me a chance and the two of them become friends even though they want to be more but there's like a clause in their handbook saying that like he cannot be with her because he's her boss's boss there we go that's short and sweet it's kind of insta lovey they have this very instant connection that leads into something more and there is a forbidden aspect and it very much is friends to lovers so if you're wanting like a really cute friends to lovers romance by all means when it comes to fall aspects um there's obviously mentions of like pumpkin spice lattes there is this like fall festival that they go to at one point which is a very brief moment in time but like it did not give me the same fall vibes as the previous book it just didn't but like not all books do i guess like if i'm reading a book based off a of fall scale like if i have a fall scale here dukes and deeks definitely outranks accidentally amy like for sure in general this book was like okay for me oh my gosh stop honey come here i guess i'm just gonna hold him for the rest of this because he cannot sit still right anyway um so <laughs> i enjoyed this one i don't think i'd ever reread it and i might be into picking something up by this author again but like this book was fine i think i'm gonna rate it 3.5 stars but i'm honestly like i'm on the fence on even like rating books nowadays like i don't feel like really rating books tell me what you all think about that like i'm not really into rating them anymore sometimes i'm just like i liked it i don't really want to like stew in what i would rate the book you know what i mean so let me know if you rate books or not or if i should keep read rating books i don't know sometimes i just really like a book but i don't want to go through the hassle of rating it i'll write a review for it and like say how i feel but like i don't know if i can if i want to do like star ratings anymore <laughs> anyway <laughs> let me know what y'all think about that but this book was a cute read if you want a read with like an instant connection between two people because that does happen in real life so like by all means pick this one up but overall it was a okay read for me it just like was very easy I want to say which a lot of romances do that like some of my favorite romance books are like easy romances but I guess I wanted more I wanted more out of this and they read younger than they were if that makes sense also so the hero of this story is supposed to be like that her boss's boss of this like big corporation or whatever and like i pictured him being like 22 <laughs> from the things that they were doing together and the way that he was speaking like i i pictured him to be 22 honestly and the hair went around that age as well but i think she's like 26 and i don't even know how old he is honestly so they read very young to me i feel like the author maybe should have changed their like job roles or something or like had the conflict be something else other than him being her boss's boss because i don't know just didn't like click i think with the rest of the story because they were doing like fun things together and like it definitely read kind of like a college read like these characters read like they were in college like college age but that's just me let me know if you've read this book and what you thought about it i would love to know i have one more book for this video that i'm going to include and that is one i have been very much anticipating <laughs> um it is chloe lisa's newest release i'm going to go pick that up now um i'm gonna listen to it while cleaning up my apartment i went to the grocery store yesterday and there's some like dry stuff you can see right there like sitting out and i am like very much certain that the cats are gonna like knock it off the counter <laughs> even the uh, big bag of tortillas like they're gonna chunk it at some point i know them so um <laughs> also i'm a little upset with them too because like these were supposed to be outdoor outdoor cats and like one of them had like a really bad injury like almost got his tail like like chopped off by something my mom thinks like a hawk like swooped in and tried to get him and like by his tail and like almost chopped his tail fully off but didn't anyway like if you can see his tail like the black one poppy like he has like a little divot in his tail fur because they had to shave off that part of his tail anyway long story short um <laughs> they've now like started sleeping inside and eating inside there's also a neighborhood cat that like gets into our cat food and so we're basically feeding the neighborhood cats spending more money than we should and the neighborhood cat like loves to bully our cats because of the food and so we now just keep the food in my place and they sleep in here i want a christmas tree in here so bad but like knowing them what did they just knock over i have no clue what they just knocked over <laughs> y'all anyway i want a christmas tree in here so bad but like with them not gonna happen i don't think i collect glass ornaments my family does and like no way no stinking way like we own over 300 close to 400 glass ornaments i want to say and 
they, they cannot be in this house with that. Like we have three cats in the other house and like the main house, my parents' house. They don't mess with the tree, except for like one of the cats will sit under the tree, but like they don't mess with the tree. They just don't. I already know these truckers though. They're gonna, they're gonna mess with it. Anyway, um, let me know what y'all do for cats who you know will knock stuff off or the tree will absolutely fall over. Cause like I wanna display my beautiful glass ornaments, but like not if they're gonna be in this house. No. So anyway, I gotta go listen to that book. So I want to listen to it really badly. Um, and yeah, go put my groceries away. Excuse my chaotic dress right now. Um, and any sounds you might hear, the cats are running around. What is new? Um, <laughs> I got a box in the mail today and um, they're loving it. Anyway, I thought I'd update you on what I'm reading. I am, I want to say 70% of the way through Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Liza. This is the next book in her like Wilmot sister series. Um, the first book being Two Wrongs Make It Right. There we go. They are Shakespeare retellings, which is really cool, especially this one, because um, if y'all don't know, 10 Things I Hate About You, starring Keith Ledger, um, that like ultimate rom-com movie is a um, actually based off of the Shakespeare play, The Taming of the Shrew. That's what this book is based off of as well. But I can totally see Chloe like giving nods to the movie 10 things i hate about you the heroine's name is literally kate in the movie her name was cat but her full name was katarina so is the heroine it's like her full name is katarina there was just this paintball scene there's a paintball scene in the movie like i really like the nods it's like very slight the plot is not the same whatsoever in the movie i think like heath ledger is like paid to take cat out and like basically tame the shrew you know what I mean like that's not what this is about this is a childhood enemies to adults to lovers <laughs> so um the hero of the story Christopher grew up right next door to the Wilmot family and he doesn't have the best home life with his grandmother she's not the most loving person his parents died when he was a child and the Wilmot family basically adopt him in with open arms as like a pseudo brother except for <laughs> Kate Kate does not see Christopher as a brother Christopher has done nothing but to get under her skin her entire life and Christopher claims the same for her. He claims like the moment that she was put into his arms when he was six years old and she was just a newborn baby like she has been the devil on his shoulder. You know what I mean? Like she has been out to ruin his life. <laughs> um, and so at the beginning of this book, Kate has moved back home. Um, she's a traveling photographer. She has moved back home because um, she's broke. <laughs> In this book, basically their pent up hate-filled hate feelings for each other burst and um there's a fine line between love and hate let's just say that so um i don't want to spoil anything else there are fall vibes in here for sure at the point that i'm at now in the book it is december so take with that what you will so like not the whole book takes place in fall there was like a thanksgiving scene a friendsgiving scene the heroine really loves like autumn fall drinks and um treats if that makes sense um so the hero at one point literally gets her like a dozen autumn themed donuts love that for her the representation in here as well is fantastic chloe's books always have fantastic rep the heroine has adhd and the hero has chronic migraines which i know is a rarity in representation especially with chronic pain so i really appreciate both of those things and i look forward to seeing chloe like explore that more throughout the rest of the book um, but i also like even if she doesn't explore it throughout the rest of the book that's totally fine that's just a part of their character it doesn't make up their whole character which is what i really like is showing that like like people who have chronic illnesses, disabilities, neurodivergence, like that's not our entire being. It's a part of us, but that's not like our entire being. So I like how Chloe's like making that apparent in the story. This series isn't necessarily my favorite compared to the Bergman brothers. Like the Bergman brothers, top knot, like they are another level. So it's hard to compare like author's works when like you've read like the creme de la creme, the best of the best by this author. Those are some of the books in the Bergman brothers series. And it's hard, like you don't want to compare things. And again, I'm struggling with my rating thing. Like I don't think I want to rate books anymore. Like I'm really struggling with that because like this book is great, but like I'm comparing it to like a all time favorite book of mine, which is Chloe's second book in the Bergen Brothers series. So like, I don't want to keep doing that. Anyway, um, as for fall vibes for this book, they are good. It has like that crisp autumn 
chill to it at the beginning definitely in the vibes but um it is december at the point that i'm reading this so it's not really fall anymore um we might get a i'm maybe thinking maybe we'll get a christmas scene which will be fun because i'm definitely in the christmas mood because christmas is coming up soon so anyway um i just thought i'd give you a quick update um but i think the last clip of this video is going to be me wrapping up this book and everything in general yeah i'm sorry the vlog is not really vlogging all that well there's not really lifestyle content i just got this in the mail if you want lifestyle content i got it a cat pooper scooper for the litter box so there's a, a life update for you <laughs> i have finished better hate than never i've been working on some stuff and i have some kitties around me they're so stinking cute when they're sleepy and not doing anything like they can be really cute okay will you let me cuddle you dude i really enjoyed this book i honestly don't know what i'm gonna rate it um, I think I need to stew on it for a little bit if I choose to rate it, but I overall really did enjoy it, especially the end. There's a conflict at the end that I felt like was handled very well for adults. That is how adults should handle content in, uh, conflict, sorry, <laughs> in romance books. The way that that was handled, perfect. I loved that. You could maybe see how the conflict would go a certain way, but Chloe Lisa was like, nope, we're going to make it go this way. And I'm going to show you how adults should actually communicate with one another. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. I really did enjoy this. I loved Christopher. Um, at first, I didn't really care for him. Um, and there is a point in here where he learns that Kate is very hurt by the way that he's treated her her whole life, basically. She feels like Christopher has ostracized her, made her feel left out, and has been mean to her at points. And he's like, I had no idea that, like, our joking around, like, led her to think that I hated her. I do not. And he's gonna do everything possible to, like, show her otherwise. And I do really love his character also because I can tell one of his love languages is gift giving. Like, he'll give her little gifts, like flowers or treats or donuts. And I'm like, love that anyway so Christopher just didn't really realize how much he was affecting Kate which I don't know maybe it's the empath in me but I don't know I would have seen that but again all characters are flawed all people are flawed so like he probably had no idea you know what I mean like he legitimately had no idea that the way that he was talking to her treating her like made her think that he hated her but overall I did enjoy this one I love the representation with both characters there's a scene towards the middle end where um he has a migraine and the heroine takes care of him and I love that love the caretaking especially when there is like chronic illnesses and chronic pain involved like I really appreciate that so overall a great read from me I don't know what I'm gonna rate it but that's okay um but yeah when it comes to fall vibes the book that I would say that definitely has the most fall vibes is Dukes and Deeks for sure. Then I would say um, Better Hate Than Never. And then lastly, Accidentally Amy. Like it's very slight. Like you talk about pumpkin spice lattes and stuff, but like it's not forefront. You know what I mean? Um, but if you're wanting the ultimate fall vibes before the month is over, definitely pick up Dukes and Deeks. That's the one that has the most fall vibes to me. So, um, but any of these books, they're pretty cute, sweet. Um, I will say Chloe Lisa had me blushing hardcore blushing hardcore with some of her scenes like miss ma'am and the fact that this is traditionally published as well like man they they know what they're doing she knows what she's doing anyway uh <laughs> i am going to sign off here thank you all so so much for watching and let me know what your some of your favorite fall autumn reads are i would love to know if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me like a fall leaf emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all